What's going on guys? Hope you guys are all doing well. Can you imagine if the market gets to all time high, sees a little bit of pullback, and then they try to inject trillions more dollars that were on the sidelines throughout the last run into the market? What do you think is gonna happen then? Let's get into it. First the intro, then the info, here we go. What's going on guys welcome back to the channel hope you guys are all doing well we had ourselves a fantastic day in the market for anybody who tuned in yesterday and watched yesterday's video hopefully several of those plays gave you guys a little bit of clarity and give you guys a little bit of profitability in the market today now for this video i do want to break down several different things here what we have to look forward to in 2024 why i think this market can still see a substantial upside despite the fact that most people are looking for some sort of crazy event or death day or black monday or market crash event whatever they want to call it some substantial pullback that i don't think is coming could we see some red days of course is the market due for a healthy pullback of course do i think we're going to see a pullback that's going to you know be described as the end of time anytime in the near future i do not and that being said let's get into why okay but before we get into that, do me a quick favor, guys. Smash that like button. If you're new, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're looking for more information on trading, guys, feel free to join the Discord. We have just completed the first 100% share trade in regards to Mera. I told you guys about that a long time ago. I made several different videos here on this channel in regards to Mera, and we are now over that 120% mark for those of you guys in the Discord who got in way back. For those of you guys who, who traded with me, who got the stocks, then sold them, then bought shares for calls, went up 30%, and then bought back in shares again. Today, we just reached a hundred percent for the first time but if you want more information on trading guys how to get in and out of trades our entries our exits several different trades perspectives links in the description below for the holidays jump in there before these small account challenges start in 2024 okay now what happens when there's a bunch of money sitting on the sideline the market rips to all-time highs and that money on the sideline wants to enter back into the market do we go higher or do we see significant pullback so that they can enter for a discount listen to this Actually, investors are sashing nearly $6 trillion in money market funds as high interest rates gave those instruments better returns in the stock market. But if borrowing costs fall in 2024, will that hoard of cash make its way back into equities and push the markets higher? Our next guest says history could be telling otherwise. Let's bring in Adam Turnquist, chief technical strategist at LPL Financial. Adam, great to have you with us. You actually wrote about this in August. I thought this was really interesting, the chart, because you, you find that it's it's not now. People aren't going to be cycling back into equities right now. That's the message history has told us. When you look at the previous four major peaks in money market assets, they really did not start to roll over until we are well into the rate, rate cutting cycle. I'm still getting used to saying rate cuts after the last year here, but that's really been the trend in history. And I don't see any slowdown. If you look just at November, fund flows into money market assets. You had 200 billion going into money market assets despite rates coming down. So that trend is still up for now. I, I do think that you'll have some flows coming into equity markets, of course, and support the market, especially a lot of offsides positioning. There's confidence in this market as well. And I think we've seen the highs for interest rates. So supportive for the market, but I don't think it's worth holding your breath for an imminent trend change here with fund flows into money markets. But Adam, and I, I, I agree with you. I see it with my clients. Uh, I think you also, though, have a dynamic. How, how do folks feeling about having, do they feel like they've missed a, a move in the markets? And, and if you think about the intensity. Let me ask you guys that question. Put, you know, a yes or no in chat. Do you guys feel like you missed a significant move in the market and you guys will not be able to make up for the move that just happened? Or do you guys think, on the other hand, that there's always going to be moves in the market. You'll all be able, you'll, you will always be able to get into an, you know, a great opportunity for the market as long as you're patient. Let me hear your thoughts. Where and how quick the velocity of the move higher, which got a lot of people off the sidelines. It's and as Courtney referenced too. It's it's great to earn you know three to five percent in the front end of the treasury curve, um, but but at some point equities outperform over time. And 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 so when you see this kind of a move in markets, it's hard to feel great here if in fact you've been cashed up. Yeah, and the other opportunity cost is not locking in some of these yields right now that you're seeing in the market. So if you're missing on both ends, if you're missing that equity market rally and some of this rally that we've seen in treasuries, we think, and we've been telling our investors and, and clients to really lock in some rates. You don't need to go far out on the curve. You don't need to take additional credit risk into high yield. Lock some of these rates in now. We think, again, that the upside in yields has, is likely capped as we look ahead to 2024. Which is worthwhile noting that could be pretty bullish for equities, but we'll wait and see what happens here as we head towards the new year. Is there data, Adam, on where that money actually goes when it goes from a money market or, or treasury bonds? It, 
I mean, I'm sure not a lot of it goes straight into equities. Some of it must go elsewhere, like maybe corporate, some sort of intermediate step. I think if you think about fund flows, fixed income is probably going to be first downstream coming out of money markets. If you think about the investors that are sitting in money markets, I think from a comfortable standpoint, I, I think, you know, again, they're, they're probably going to move into more of a fixed income, safer security versus chasing this equity market rally. In terms of data, we did see some pretty good evidence of fund flows coming back into U.S. equities just over the last week, of course, powering this rally that we've seen broaden out significantly over the last several weeks. All right, guys. So we could technically be looking at over a trillion dollars pushed back into the market over the next few months here as rates do begin to get cut from the Fed. A quick reminder, guys, if you haven't yet, of course, smash the like button and engage the video. But let's keep it going here, guys. The GX Magnet today was at 475, really pulling the market up there with it. The overall algos for the market were pretty bullish throughout the day. We have been monitoring several different instruments throughout the day to help us, help give us a little bit of a, you know, tip and edge and advantage in the market and help us, you know, understand exactly where these dealers are hedging the market. The top flow was meta did not catch meta at all this week but man oh man does that chart look good we're not going to cover in this video but i will be covering several different holdings of the queues in a video for this weekend so stay tuned for that guys the spy is currently sitting just 1.1 percent below um all-time highs as we did see that wonderful flag breakdown and break out on monday and tuesday of this week that we did have from just a week prior the second thing is i do want to compare that a uh, spy set that we just finished seeing to PayPal that looks like it's on its way to potentially break above the previous highs here and maintain above that 6413 level ideally going back to the queues now the queues also close above all-time highs for the market we're looking to really see if it can come back and test this 40970 to 409 level if it can maintain the recent level of support and see higher highs I expect this thing to continue going here the only way to trade this in my opinion would be to manage risk and really let the you know winners ride if you are so lucky to to find yourself a winner now last but not least guys carvana now carvana is in a wonderful spot right now but recently it had a level of resistance at roughly 5719 to 5742 now today it did something that it hasn't done in a long period of time it gets up over those sellers and use that previous level of resistance as support mark my words as long as cvna can maintain above this gap fill it has a shot to dip back down and get back up all right, as long as I can maintain above that gap level, I am looking for a little bit of pullback here. See if that gap level gets maintained and see that push towards the outside. I am, I would be targeting roughly that 79.28 level. And after all this pent up time of being below this zone here, I can easily see this being a breakout. All right, guys. So that being said, guys, that is everything I got for you guys this afternoon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you guys want more information on trading, guys, holiday specials on right now. Link in the description. Jump in there. We are live again tomorrow. Several different traders, several different perspectives, but one of the best trading communities that I have ever seen. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Much